Hey folks, welcome to Atomic Game Theory, the show that uses conflict theory and math to study the tiny decisions that can make the big differences between winning and losing your favorite games. I don't know about you, but in the games I play, everyone at the table is fighting to feel the thrill of victory. There's nothing better. On the other hand, one of the worst feelings in a game is when you realize you just can't win. This can come for all sorts of reasons. Maybe you get to the last round and you realize that if you just had one more round, you could finish the big move you'd planned. Or you look around at everyone's pile of victory points and you realize you just can't catch up. Or maybe everyone else just got lucky and you can't catch a break. For me, this is much worse than being eliminated from a game. At least then I can go do something else. But here, I'm just forced to keep playing a game with no hope of winning. So what can I do? I can make someone else lose. I can provide just enough of a hindrance that whoever I decide to attack loses. Or I can decide to make someone win by just pushing them across the finish line. Most games of diplomacy I play, there's always one person in this position. They can't win the game, everyone else just pushes them around, so they decide to act in a certain way so that someone will let them be on their team and they can get the littlest bit of victory. But it doesn't feel like a win. It never feels like a win when you're in that position. It just feels like you're helping someone else win. This is a major problem in game theory called kingmaking. It occurs in any multiplayer game when one player can't win, and they instead simply decide which other player will be victorious. It hurts, and it comes up a lot more than you'd think. Take Munchkin. Munchkin is a ridiculously popular game. I don't even know how many expansions there are. Seven? Or new versions like Munchkin Gloom? I don't know. It's smart, it's fun, I used to play it a lot, and now I see my students playing it constantly. But Munchkin has a frustrating endgame. Munchkin is a game about exploring a dungeon by taking turns kicking down the door, fighting monsters, and getting all the loot. Every time you defeat a monster, you gain a level and get a little bit stronger. You have a bunch of cards in your hand that you can use to affect encounters. Like you can turn a monster into a little baby version, or you can make sure that it's hanging out with its twin. Any player can play these modifiers on any monster they want. So some of your modifiers are going to be helpful for you, and some are harmful for your opponents. Munchkin ends when one player gets to 10th level, but often a lot of people get to 9th level at the same time. So if I'm the first one to try for a win, I take my shot. I play as many helpful cards as I can to make that monster as easy to defeat as possible. But since I'm the first one to do it, everyone else has lots of cards in their hands so they can stop me, and they do. The first player to try to win Munchkin almost never wins Munchkin. In kingmaking terms, this is what we call the gladiator variant. Consider a table of four Munchkin players, each with four cards, two helpful and two harmful. And to make it simple, we'll say they all have equal power. Whoever takes the first shot is going to get piled on by everyone else. The first player uses both helpful cards, while all the other players each play one of their harmful cards. The first player just can't win. When the second player tries to win, there are fewer harmful cards out on the table, but still enough to overcome two helpful cards. The second player also loses. As we run through the scenario, we can see that the third player also doesn't have the resources to win outright, and so the last player to try to win is the one with the best chance to be victorious. By taking a shot, the first player puts themselves into a losing position. The best they can do is use their harmful cards to determine which other opponent wins. Unless the first person to try to win is so strong that they can deal with every other player, it's just a losing proposition. Now Munchkin varies the strength of their card, so it's not quite so easy to pick a winner. However, it is seldom to your benefit to try to win first. The gladiator variant is what happens when everybody is trying to win, but sometimes a losing player just decides to throw the game. We call this the collusion variant, and it's basically illegal in every tournament sport. Say you're playing poker. There's three people left. You know you can't win, so you look at the opposition. Player A has been friendly to you all night, joking around, and is currently in second place. Player B? Let's just call them the villain. They're way ahead and they've been rude to everyone. So you and player A make a pact. You'll lose in such a way that they get all of your chips, allowing player A a much stronger position against the villain. Seems reasonable, but it's totally not allowed. Collusion means that players gang up in such a way that winning is no longer even about playing the game. People are just giving up and deciding who wins. Magic the Gathering tournaments see tons of players concede as soon as they realize they don't have the possibility of winning just to avoid the appearance of collusion. Think about it this way. I know it makes you furious when all your friends gang up on you just as you're about to win, but imagine if there was real prize money on the line. Outside of your friendly game night, collusion gets shut down real fast. So if there are no good solutions to Kingmaker, how do we avoid it in the first place? One way is to make it difficult to determine who is winning and who is losing. Many recent games have added a secret victory mechanic that you're shooting for, but no one else knows exactly what it is. We see it in the Routes in Ticket to Ride, the Dukes in Valeria Card Kingdoms, and the Kadama in... in Kadama. They keep winning a secret, but not too secret. Let people know who is doing well, but don't make it exact. Let victory be a surprise, and most players will still feel involved in the game. An alternative is to limit the ways in which players can affect each other. Some games are pure competition, but a lot of others are more like a race. 
In a worker placement game, your goal is to be as efficient as possible, but if someone else takes your resource, you can usually find another way to get what you need. In Lords of Waterdeep, even though all players know about the quests you want to complete, it's usually pretty difficult to stop someone from getting the resource they need, especially late in the game. Seven Wonders takes a different tack by assigning more victory points to things as the ages pass. So buying a monument in the third age will always be worth more points than the first age. This catch-up mechanic allows all players the opportunity to still be in the game even if they tanked it in the first age. Finally, a game can just eliminate players so they don't stick around to affect the outcome. As much as I hate being kicked out of a game of Risk, at least it will continue to be fair without my vengeful influence. Whether we're talking about gladiators or collusion, kingmaking is a big problem in games that can keep people from having fun. The goal of a game is to win, and being forced to hand victory to another player is about one of the worst feelings there is in a game. Think about kingmaking the next time you get to the end of a game. If you don't win the game, did you help someone else win? Did you hinder someone and force them to lose? Or did you team up with a friend? Studying the big finale of a game can help us avoid kingmaking, create fun mechanics, and have more satisfying endgames. Now you're thinking like a game theorist. This has been your Atomic Look Inside Kingmaking. Thanks for watching.